Uh, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another edition of Rational Wrestling Talk. This is the Rational Wrestling Mark, and we're going to be talking about how we're going to get Cody Rhodes to Roman Reigns at WrestleMania 40. All right. I have a solution and I want to share it with you guys. For those that are worrying about Cody not getting his his WrestleMania match with Roman Reigns at Mania because The Rock returned on Raw and basically teased that he wants to face the Tribal Chief at WrestleMania by saying, you know, I want to or I may just sit at the head of the table, right? Trying to basically referencing him going to, you know, out to eat and him saying, okay, should I sit at the bar? Should I sit at the the booth, whatever? Or should I sit at the head of the table? And I felt like that was a great way to basically set up uh, what is a dream match for many in Roman Reigns and The Rock. You know, that's the WrestleMania worthy match to do. Um, it doesn't get bigger than that. However, I don't see I don't see it being the WrestleMania match. And you know, I come to the conclusion that this is the best time to bring back the rock. Okay, for a match with Roman. I don't think we have another year left to to wait. I think if we're going to do Roman and Rock, we got to do it, you know, this year. I don't think WrestleMania 40 is the best time to do it. Because you got to think about it like this. Who's going to be here on Raw and SmackDown? Who's going to be showing up to the shows every week? It's definitely not going to be Roman. Because Roman's part-time. Rock, not happening. Because of his commitment to Hollywood, his schedule is very hectic. So there's no way that he would be able to, you know, make it every week on Raw or SmackDown. You know, um, he's just not going to make that commitment week to week anymore. He's not a full-time wrestler anymore, guys. I mean... He's not in his prime. And I don't know if The Rock is really, if he's conditioned enough to wrestle. Because the last time he got in the ring, it was against John Cena, a full on match. And he got hurt, you know, got injured and required sur surgery right after. So. I, I don't see him lasting 20 minutes with Roman Reigns. I don't. And we don't want to get our hopes up. You know, we want to have it be official before we even get our hopes up. Until we see an actual graphic of Roman Reigns versus The Rock for WrestleMania 40 in Philadelphia, um, I don't believe it. I don't believe it. Until we see that graphic... Uh, nothing is set in stone, so don't get your hopes up. Um, it was just simply a teaser. That's all it was. And the real the real story here is of Cody Rhodes finishing his story. You know, him winning the big one for his father, something his father did not get to do. And a lot of people are saying that, that Cody should have beaten Roman last year. And... You know, judging by uh, the tail, you know, I, I want to say judging by how Roman's title reign has developed in the past year, I should say, um, it's quite evident that Cody could have won. Um the bloodline story could have definitely unfolded the way it had in the summertime without Roman being champion. I don't think Roman really had to be champion for that. Um, so 
you know, Roman's reign is basically becoming exhausted at this point. And out of three years of being champion, he's only had over 50 title reigns. Most of those title defenses were not won clean at all. They were, he won those matches by cheating, having help, you know. And with WrestleMania 40, I mean, they've been teasing it for months now that this is the, the main event for night two. Night one will be Seth and, and uh, Seth Rollins and CM Punk, right? That's your obvious night one WrestleMania main event. The Rock is not going to be on Raw or SmackDown like Cody. And if Rock were to face Roman at WrestleMania and The Rock, first of all, he would have to win the Royal Rumble. Like, you don't just get to come back and be like, hey, I want a challenge for the world title. But you didn't beat no one to get a shot. You would have to win the Rumble or the Chamber to face either champion at WrestleMania. You know? Because whoever doesn't win the Rumble, they'll get a chance, you know, inside the Elimination Chamber to face the champion at WrestleMania. You know, and they're more likely to do a number one contenders match at the Elimination Chamber, right? Inside a chamber match. But I'm going to get to that in a minute. I want to talk about how Cody Rhodes is going to get to Roman. Now, Cody Rhodes, just, just going to lay it out right now that he's not winning the Royal Rumble. Okay. It doesn't make sense for Cody to win the Rumble twice back-to-back. -back. With CM Punk being back, it makes all the sense in the world for Punk to win the Rumble. He never won the Rumble before, and Punk has his own story to finish. That story being, I just want to headline WrestleMania. Um, I, feel, I feel like I'm dude four to you know main event wrestlemania and it's my time but in order for him to do that he has to win the rumble so punk is definitely win the rumble so the whole purpose for cody to not win the rumble is to basically sell disappointment for his character you it's very important that cody rhodes is selling frustration disappointment man i tried to win the rumble because i want to finish my story at wrestlemania it's like cody's been avoiding it you know avoid avoiding really talking about it and just addressing it you know in the past year he's almost kind of dodged it a little bit but as rumble gets closer and closer cody's gonna start to be more motivated to win the rumble and when he loses he gets eliminated he's gonna sell disappointment he's gonna sell on um, just being defeated uh hopelessness all that because that was his one ticket to go to wrestlemania so now cody is gonna have the same expression that he had when he lost at mania last year selling disappointment oh man i let my father down i let everybody down you know it's that perfect baby faced baby face emotion of selling defeat disappointment couldn't get the job done came this close but no cigar you know it, remi it reminds me of of the Sean and Taker story from WrestleMania 26, the buildup. You know, you think of how Shawn Michaels was working his way back into facing Undertaker. His whole motivation was to end the streak. And when he entered the Rumble, you know, he was hell bent on winning it. And when he did not win the Rumble, he sold disappointment, anger, 
uh, just a lot of emotion. You know, he was pissed off. He super kicked the referee. He stormed off. You know, he just went crazy. He became obsessed with the motivation to, you know, to defeat Undertaker's undefeated streak, to end the WrestleMania streak. And he wanted to prove himself that badly because he was so, he, he was so, you know, offended, offended that he lost the taker the year before. And he, and, and, and he knows in the back of his mind that I'm better than the undertaker. I'm better than you. Well, that's how Cody should feel, you know, storyline wise, that's how Cody should feel. I can beat you because I was about to beat you until Solo got involved and cost me the match. The same feelings that Sean had losing to Undertaker should be the same feelings that Cody should have. But the, the path to get to Roman is going to be a little bit different from how Sean got to Undertaker, right? The way, if you remember, if you remember how the WrestleMania 26, you know, streak versus career, how that really came about, how it unfolded was Sean, you know, he broke into the Elimination Chamber and cost Undertaker the world title. That's how he did it. But this is how Cody Rhodes should get to Roman. So here's the thing. Cody's not winning the Rumble. Right. But for weeks and weeks, he just sells being disappointed. He's he's angry. He's pissed. He's feeling hopeless. The fans are buying into it because they really want Cody to win the big one. They're they're there for his story to end happily ever after. You know, the typical good guy story. And they want to see him succeed really badly so they're going to be on that emotional roller coaster with cody so okay here comes elimination chamber right but the only the problem is you know we all know cm punk once he wins the rumble he's choosing to fight seth at wrestlemania point blank so at elimination chamber which i think should involve the rock versus roman reigns for the undisputed championship Okay, Chamber is going to be in Australia. You know, that's going to be a big ass arena. Okay, that's going to be huge. So, the numbers for that are going to be insane. So, you can do Rock and Roman. You don't got to do it at WrestleMania. We really don't. I mean, The Rock's biggest matches, if you think about it, The Rock's biggest matches happened you know, did not happen at WrestleMania, aside from Stone Cold Steve Austin, of course. But if you think about it, The Rock's first world title win as a top babyface, right, in 2000, he won that title at Backlash, which was a B-level pay-per-view. He didn't win it at WrestleMania. He didn't win it at the Rumble or SummerSlam. No, he won it at Backlash, a B-level pay-per-view. So there's nothing wrong with doing The Rock and Roman at Chamber. I mean, that's the perfect time to do that match because for that event, you're going to need, for the venue, the size of the, of the, of the arena, the stadium, and all the people that's going to be there, all the Australians that are going to be there at, the, at, at Chamber, they're going to fill up those seats. You need a box office type of type of match for that card. You need that big money match. And Roman and The Rock are perfect for that event. You don't need it for WrestleMania 40, in my opinion. Right? Because once... One, because if you were to do Roman in The Rock, Roman Reigns is not going to show up on Raw or SmackDown. Okay, you got to think about it long term. This is only short term. See, with The Rock and Roman, it's short term. 
with Cody and Roman, it's long term because Cody is going to be on the shows every week. Roman is not. And you want to move the company forward with a new champion, a new top guy, basically a new era, right? You can't move on to a new era, to a new, uh, you know, a new era, whatever, if Roman is still your champion, if, you know, Roman is holding that title hostage. So we got to do that chamber and it's, it's going to be a huge match to do. They're definitely going to, I don't know if they, I don't know if they, if they already, if they already sold out already for chamber in Australia, I'm not sure. I'm pretty sure they have, but you do rock and Roman and then you do an elimination chamber, number one contendership, right? Everybody from SmackDown has a chance to qualify, right? Let's say, uh, you know, you, you got six SmackDown guys, right? But the thing is, someone, one, 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 one participant of that match gets injured, right? Uh, let's, let, let's just go with Kevin Owens, right? Let's say Kevin Owens is in the chamber match, right, for the number one contendership. He gets injured by, per se, Grayson Waller and Austin Theory. They jump him and they injure Kevin Owens, you know, thus take him out of the match altogether, right? So now, a week before or two weeks, whatever, yeah, two weeks before, you know, Nick Aldis has to find his replacement, right? He has to find Kevin Owens' replacement. They don't do a battle royal. They don't do a triple threat, fatal four-way, no. Owens is out of the match, okay? And a week before, they 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 show Cody going into Nick Aldis's office to have a talk, right? Now, we've seen before Cody on SmackDown having talks with Nick Aldis, right? You know where that's, you know where that's going. You know where that's going. Obviously, Cody is trying to convince Nick Aldis to put him on SmackDown, work out some type of deal, right? Well, we can finally see, you know, the relationship between Nick Aldis and Cody Rhodes. We can kind of, you know, reveal how that turns out, right, with Nick Aldis putting Cody Rhodes in the chamber, right, as the mystery, you know, participant, right? They're not going to announce who's going to be, who's going to replace Kevin Owens, but at the chamber event itself, they're going to announce the mystery opponent. I mean, not, not the mystery opponent, the mystery participant. So the last minute, you're going to get Cody Rhodes, okay? And Cody Rhodes is going to win the chamber, right? And that's how Cody Rhodes will get to Roman Reigns, right? They do it in a way where it's realistic, it makes sense, it's logical, but it also it also falls into the relationship between Nick Aldis and Cody Rhodes, right? Why do you think Cody Rhodes has been coming to SmackDown for the past couple months? Obviously trying to get back to Roman, right, in some way. You know, why, why do you think that Nick Aldis and, and Roman Reigns, you know, had that intense, uh, you know, interaction backstage? Well, that was for a reason. That was to basically set up Nick Aldis, you know, because Roman Reigns as a character wants to be in control of everything. He thinks the buck stops with him because he's the undisputed champion. He thinks he runs SmackDown. But the whole the whole purpose of bringing Nick Aldis in was to basically counter Roman and his authority, you know, and have an actual GM on the SmackDown brand to basically run things, you know. And Roman thinks that he runs SmackDown, but he doesn't. And in that interaction, 
it basically they basically told you that okay, Roman Reigns has somebody over him in authority in a position of power, and that was that was solidified in that in that segment weeks ago. If if, if you remember, right? They did that for a reason. Now, if you think if you think about Nick Aldis and Cody Rhodes, those two actually go way back. If re, if you remember that indie event, um, it was like an indie show, but it was like a big, it was like a big deal at the time. I think it was in 2018, All In or All Out. I, I'm not sure what the name was. I think it was like All In. 2018 and it was like the first major indie show right the first major indie show and it was main evented by cody rhodes and nick aldis right i believe that was the main event but my point is cody rhodes and nick aldis they go way back they've known each other around a time that aew you know, became a thing, right? They knew each other way back when that entire indie show, um, you know, had all in, right? And they were part of that show together. So there's definitely a connection there. Nick Aldis is going to be the reason why Cody Rhodes gets back to Roman. Because... Cody Rose is technically a raw superstar. A raw superstar cannot just go to SmackDown and challenge Roman Reigns for the title. That just can't happen. That's why the world title, the World Heavyweight Championship, came back. You know? And the brand split keeping Roman and, and Cody separated, it really falls in line with, with Roman basically being scared to face Cody. Or feeling like he can't actually beat Cody because he knows that if, if it wasn't for Solo, he would have lost. He would have lost to Cody. So Roman knows that Cody has his number. So he would have done anything to keep Cody away from him. But not this time. Cody saw that there was... Okay, Kevin Owens got injured. You know, hypothetically, Kevin Owens gets injured and gets taken out of the chamber. Okay, now he's going to make his move. Now he's going to go to Nick Aldis and basically convince him to put him inside uh, the chamber, right, to be the, the sixth participant. Why? Because they're both friends. They're both close. They, they have a good uh, rapport with one another. Now, I'm going to compare that to when Shawn Michaels, if you remember, when Shawn was trying to get into the, the Elimination Chamber match, right? And back in 2010, when Shawn Michaels was hell-bent on facing Undertaker so he can break this streak, he lost at the Rumble. He got eliminated. So he, he he's thinking to himself, okay, how am I going to get to Undertaker now? How am I going to get to beat the streak? Oh, I know. I'm going to go to Teddy Long, who was SmackDown general manager at the time. I'm going to go to Teddy Long, and I'm going to convince him to put me in the chamber match. You know? And Shawn Michaels tried to convince Teddy, and Teddy would not put him in the chamber. And... Listen closely because I'm about to make a really important point here. And this actually falls in line with real life, right? In life, it's about who you know, right? Who you know can get you in certain doors, right? It's about who you know, your network, and the rapport that you have with people, a, a, a certain level of trust. The reason why Nick Aldis would give Cody Rhodes that um, have him replace Kevin Owens, who's injured, give him his spot in the chamber match, right? There's, you know, the reason for that would be because they're good friends. 
right? And because Nick Aldis, he trusts his Cody Rhodes. He, he likes them. They have a good rapport, right? He would do Cody that favor, that solid, because why? Because they're cool with each other. They fuck with each other, right? Nick Aldis would not do that for anybody else that he's not close with. He, he's not going to do that for anybody else. He would do that favor for Cody Rhodes because he knows how it is how important it is for Cody Rhodes to finish the story at WrestleMania because those because he's close with Cody. It's about who you know. The reason why Shawn Michaels could not convince Teddy Long to put him in the elimination chamber so that he had a, a shot to win that chamber so that he could face Undertaker at WrestleMania. The reason why was because Teddy Long and Shawn Michaels are not close. They're not friends. Okay? What you saw on TV, did you ever see or, you know, ever see Shawn and Teddy Long actually interact? No. Back when there was an actual brand war between Raw and SmackDown in the ruthless, in the ruthless aggression era, who was the SmackDown general manager? Teddy Long. For the general manager for Raw was Eric Bischoff. Shawn Michaels was on Raw this that entire period, right? Throughout the whole duration of his second run, Shawn Michaels was on Raw. So he never interacted with Teddy Long ever, ever in his uh in his second run. Never. So Logic will tell you that why would Teddy Long do Shawn Michaels a favor when he doesn't really like him? He doesn't trust him. He may respect him, but that doesn't mean he likes Shawn Michaels. That doesn't mean he would trust Shawn Michaels. They're not friends. They don't know each other well. They don't have a, a they don't have a, a rapport. There's no trust there. Right? And it goes back to it's about who you know. If Rey Mysterio, hypothetically speaking, if Rey Mysterio were to go to Teddy Long for a favor, I'm pretty sure Teddy Long would do the favor for Rey Mysterio. Why? Because Rey Mysterio was on SmackDown all those years. He began his career on SmackDown while Teddy Long was the SmackDown GM. All those years. So they're close. They, there's trust there. And they have a good working relationship. There's a rapport there, right? See, you're only going to do favors for people and help out the people that you actually fuck with, that you're actually cool with, that you can actually trust. You're not going to do favors for someone that you don't even know. You're not going to really do things for people that you don't actually trust, right? Why would Teddy Long do that favor for Shawn Michaels? When there's no trust, when he never worked with Sean before, so he doesn't know him that well. He don't really fuck with Sean Michael, so why would he? Why would he do him a favor? Right, and not just that. When when Sean didn't get his way, guess what? He super kicked Teddy Long in the face. He super kicked him because Teddy would not put him in the chamber to get to the Undertaker. But it's different with Cody. It's see Cody and Shawn Michaels' uh, path to their WrestleMania respective WrestleMania matches. It's the same. It's kind of the same, but different in a sense of how they actually get to WrestleMania. See, Cody's not is not going to have to hijack the chamber. No. Cody's not going to have to interfere and cost uh the rock the the title. No. He's not going to do it that way. Because his character is about being respectful, being fair, doing things the right way. Shawn Michaels, his motivation was to end the streak, which caused him to be obsessive over it, which caused him to be desperate. Meaning, I don't care, or I don't care how I do it, I'm just going to do what I got to do, whether it's right or wrong. 
So Sean didn't care how he got to the Undertaker. It, it, it didn't matter if, if it was right or wrong. He was desperate and he was obsessed. But Cody, on the other hand, he's he's going to do things the right way. He's going to do things the, the strategical way, right? Because on SmackDown, the SmackDown general manager happens to be one of his closest friends in Nick Aldis. So him and Nick Aldis have a good rapport, unlike with Sean and Teddy, right? That whole comparison, Sean and Teddy don't have a good relationship, a working relationship. So Teddy Long would have never done that favor for Shawn Michaels. He said, oh, I can't do it for you, Shawn. I can't. No, really, what he really meant, what he really meant was, I'm not going to do that favor for you because I don't fuck with you. Simple. I don't fuck with you. Now, of course, he would never, he at that time, he would never say it, but what you really what I what he really meant was I don't like you. I'm not gonna do if I'm not gonna do that favor for you because I don't trust you. We don't have a good rapport together, you know, but it's different with Cody, Cody Rhodes, because him and Nick Aldis are cool. Okay, so you're gonna okay, so he'll do him that solid, he'll do him that favor of putting him in the chamber. And that's how we'll get to Cody and Roman. Right. But it can't happen without Nick Aldis. And why do you think they brought in Nick Aldis? There's a reason for that. There's a reason. And of course, with Nick Aldis wanting to be in a position of power over Roman Reigns. He's going to do he's going to make the, the, the decisions. Whether Roman likes it or not. Right. So, and that's and that's only going to start beef between Roman and Nick Aldis. They're going to start butting heads. And on the build up to WrestleMania, Roman Reigns could could blame Nick Aldis for putting Cody Rhodes in that chamber match. He could have a beef with him because he put Cody in that chamber match, which you know had him you know which he won, which he will win, right? He'll win the chamber and go on to fight Roman. It can't be done so elementary. It can't be predictable. It has to be done in a way where it's unpredictable, but it makes sense on how it's executed. So, yeah, that's how that's how it's going to happen, man. So let me know what you guys think down below in the comment section. Uh, do you think The Rock and Roman is going to happen at WrestleMania 40 or at, at Elimination Chamber? Personally, it should happen at the Chamber because for that event and for the venue and for the, the you know for them being in Australia in the first place, they need that big money match and The Rock and Roman is perfect. I mean, let's let's go back to Elim Elimination Chamber from two years ago. Goldberg and Roman Reigns happened at Elimination Chamber. Now. You know, you can easily say that's a, a WrestleMania worthy match, of course, but it happened at Elimination Chamber. So it goes to show you that you can do the big box office draw matches at a B level pay per view like Elimination Chamber. The difference is it's going to be at a bigger venue more seats will be filled and it's going to be in Australia, which is a great wrestling market. So that's the way to do it, man. That's how we're going to get Cody and Roman. There's a lot of storytelling that's going to be involved and I'm predicting it right now. That's exactly how it's going to go. That's exactly how it's going to go. I'm, I'm calling it right now. Nick Aldis is going to be the reason why Cody faces Roman. So with that being said, thank you all for watching. This is the Rational Wrestling Mark, another edition of Rational Wrestling Talk. Make sure you like, subscribe, and I'm out. Peace.